is Zartastic and welcome to this art lesson episode. We're going to be exploring using watercolor paints and some oil pastels to make a super cute squirrel artwork perfect for autumn or fall. Anytime that you want to create a squirrel, hey my friend, this is the art lesson for you. So please grab some thicker paper. Um, I just love using some cardstock, but whatever paper you got, you'd use that. And grab your oil pastels, but if you don't have any oil pastels, make sure you just grab some wax crayons. That will be totally fine. And some paint, either uh, watercolor paint or temper paint cakes. And let's dive into this art lesson. So we're going to begin our lovely little squirrel with an oil pastel. So we're going to grab oil pastels first. We're going to draw our squirrel and then we're going to paint in some of the space. So we're going to start over on this side of the paper. So if you imagine there's the center line, we're just going to go right to the left of the center. And that way we'll have enough space for both squirrel's body and squirrel's tail. So here we go. We're going to begin first with squirrel's little nose. We're going to draw a nice little letter V with a brown oil pastel for squirrel's nose. Next, we're gonna draw two little cheeks. So from the bottom of the V, we're gonna bring a line around, down, around, and up into a U shape. And we're gonna do that again. So we're going the other way. We're gonna draw another line. That's letter U. So we're gonna go at starting at the bottom of that V. We're gonna go down, around, and up. So two little cheeks for squirrel. Next, we're gonna do squirrel's eyes. So we're gonna put, find the top corner for the V, and we're gonna put a finger there, and we're gonna put one dot at the same level, and we're gonna put another finger space, dot at the same level to mark out where we're gonna put our cute little eyes. We're gonna go up, around, and down, up, around, and down to make two squirrel eyes. Okay. Then we're gonna take our pastel and connect at the bottom, connect at the bottom. Just like that. In each eye, we're gonna do a letter U shape. Letter U shape for our big pupil. And in each pupil, we're gonna do one big circle and one small circle for the glare of light. And then you can color in the pupil, leaving just those two circles white. Beautiful. Next we're going to draw a curving line up and around over the eyes on each side and then down below as well. And remember, you can hit pause as you need to if I'm going too fast. Perfect. Okay. Next, we're going to do two squirrel ears. So we're first going to do one squirrel ear here. So a nice little upside down U shape or a curving line. And then we're going to come back to the other side in a second. So we're going to do squirrel's face. We're going to draw a nice big squirrel head, skip over that ear, around and down on both sides. And then on this side of the head, we're gonna put another one, but it's gonna be kind of peeking out from the first, from the head, just like that. And then in each ear, we're gonna put another curving line. This one, we're just gonna see part of one. Very cute. All right. Next, we're gonna draw a squirrel's body. So first, we're gonna draw 
little feet at the bottom. So we're going to do two little U's at the bottom for little scroll feet. And then we're going to do a curve line from one side of the head down to one foot. From one side of the head on this side, down over there. And then we'll connect at the bottom, so we'll just draw a nice slightly curved line between the feet, just like that. All right, we're gonna do squirrel's tail over here in this other nice side, and then we'll come back and we'll give our squirrel an acorn and some arms. So we're gonna draw from the top of the head, so just below, we'll put one finger space down from that ear, so we'll put our finger there, and we're gonna put a dot, okay? And we're gonna go down to the bottom. We're gonna have a finger space from that foot. So we'll put our finger there. We'll put a dot. Okay, so we have one dot, two dots. We're gonna start at this dot. We're gonna draw our tail and then come back in and we'll connect at the bottom there. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go starting from this dot. We're gonna go up, around, and in. Okay, up, around, and in. Then we're gonna go back towards the edge. We're gonna leave another finger space and put a dot. We have a dot nice right there. And we're gonna go from that dot down and over here. Okay, here we go. Down and connect to that bottom dot. We're gonna go from here and then we're gonna bring a line up around and connect, but we're gonna make it zigzagged. And that way it'll be a second color. So we have two different squirrel colors going on. All right, let's go zigzag up and connect. And that way we have some lovely squirrel texture going on. Let's go and add our acorn. So below the next, if we imagine there's a line across, if we imagine that line there, we'll have a nice acorn top. So we're gonna draw a nice curving line up and over, like an upside down U. We're gonna draw a line that connects across. We're gonna draw our squirrel paws. So we're gonna draw two curving lines just below for our squirrel paws. And then we'll add some curving lines up, just like that, to make nice little squirrel paws. We're gonna finish our acorns. We're gonna bring a line down to a point, down to a point. Next, we'll add the acorn top with a little line we're gonna go one way with some diagonal lines for some acorn texture, and then we're gonna add diagonal lines the other direction to complete our acorn texture. We're gonna bring, add some arms. We're gonna bring a line up. On the top line of each paw, we're gonna bring up in a curve. And then we'll add just a couple zigzags below for some squirrel arms. And to complete our squirrel, we're gonna put a dot below each eye. So about a finger space in. And then we're gonna bring a nice curving line down for each cheek and then out again, and then around and down for the belly. Just like that, you can bring it over top of the nose if you want. That way it'll be a second color. So it almost looks like the letter, the number eight. We have a nice curving line around, and then down, remember, for the belly. Just like that. And if you wanna add any other details, you sure can. So you can add toe detail, you can add grass detail, Whatever details you want to add in your little world, you can go ahead and add it. 
And once you're done, you are ready to paint it in. So I'm just gonna grab my paints, and these are watercolor paints. So you could use either watercolor paints or temper paint cakes. So you're gonna need your paints. You're also going to need your brush. So I got my trusty bamboo brush here. Right, so we need our brush, and we need our dish of water. So we're gonna dip our brush in the water. Okay, we're going to Swirl, swirl, swirl in our first color. So I'm gonna pick brown for my squirrel's body and then I'm gonna do the belly and the underside of the tail with a different color. So swirl, swirl, swirl three times in your chosen color. And then we're gonna go around and carefully paint in our lovely squirrel. And anytime you wanna make that paint go farther, just add water because it's watercolor paint, we can make it go a little bit farther. And if you get areas where you go inside other lines, don't worry, we're just gonna keep going because we'll let the colors blend together to make some new colors and that will make our art more visually interesting. And then I'm gonna pick a second color to do my squirrel's belly and snout. I'm gonna go around the eyes with this color as well. And if you don't like these colors, you put the colors that make you happy. Of course, we always have to add our own artist flavor to our art. So add your artist flavor however you want. And if you make a mistake, that's okay because, well, Mistakes help us learn. It's nice to see what happens sometimes. You just gotta try it and see what happens, right? And of course, we wanna do the underside of the tail. Just bring that around. And then I'm gonna paint in my acorn. You can pick whatever colors make you happy for your acorn. And as you can see, as we're painting, that oil pastel is resisting the paint. So it's not, it's pushing that paint away so we're not covering up any of our lines. And that's called resist painting. And finally, you can paint in any remaining details that you would like. So I went ahead and I added some grass. So maybe if you added grass too, you can paint in your grass, paint in whatever you would like. It's really up to you. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a sky just around the squirrel only. So just a hint of blue around the squirrel. I'm not gonna do all the background. I'm just gonna add a nice little blue glow to kind of indicate that, to sky, that there's a sky there. Just a nice little glow, just like that. Maybe I'm gonna try painting a little bit of blue around the bottom of those pupils there. Make it a little bit more interesting. Just like that. If you wanna get really fancy, you can add a couple dots of maybe some purple. Here and there. And that just adds a little bit of artist flavor. And of course, you can add your artist flavor however you would like. I'm gonna get a little bit more water. Perfect, and just like that, your lovely squirrel.
squirrel artwork is done. Hi there, thank you so much for watching the art lesson. Now let's dive into some more ways that you can explore Ms. Artastic art lessons. First place to start is the Ms. Artastic blog. Here it's kind of like a hub for all things Ms. Artastic. You're gonna find links to the podcast where you can find my show notes and listen, um, or you can find the podcast on your favorite podcast player. Just search Ms. Artastic. You're gonna find teaching strategies and resources, free printables, art lessons for kids from the elements of art, principle, principles of design, seasonal art lesson ideas, and holiday art lesson ideas, some of the more popular holidays. But you can find so much more. So it gives you a great place to start. You can find some free lessons by clicking the number one button. And then you can learn a bit about me and find all my blog posts that cover things from back to school, advice for new art teachers, um, talking about the principles of design and how to teach them, tips for teaching visual art to kids, and so much more. Lots of freebies to discover, and this is the Ms. Artastic blog, so make sure you go to MsArtastic.com as this is your first place to start on your Ms. Artastic journey. The next place to go to is the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. You can search Ms. Artastic in the search bar up at the top, and then you can find my store and my lovely gold cat logo here. And this is a great place to start to find amazing art resources. As you can see, there is over 800 different resources to discover. Um, and over here, we have our custom categories. So if you don't want to use the search bar, which you could totally search my store over here. But if you don't want to, or if it's a little bit too complicated, you can always find different custom categories to get some inspiration for things you might want to find, like art sub resources, my artivity books that I've created, artists and art history, back to school, elements of art, directed drawing, principles of design, our world, primary art lessons, my roll and draw series, oh yeah, social emotional learning, and of course all of the holidays are in here from Halloween to Earth Day, end of year Easter, St. Patrick's Day spring, and so much more. Um, some of the cool things you might find are elements of art workbooks, I got principles of design workbooks, and so much art history guys. I have gone to town this year and created a lot of art history. So you'll find art history workbooks. Um, there's a couple, there's a few different ones. This one is um, modern art history. You'll find Gustav Klimt, um, Georges Seurat. We'll have Alma Woodsy Thomas, Emily Carr, and so much more. In the first one, there is artists such as Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Salvador Dali. Um, and then I also have Western art history from 1900s to 1990s. So this is a modern art history workbook that goes through all the different modern art history movements from data to surrealism to abstract expressionism to early 20th century art. And I also have a art history, history of Western art, um, prehistoric to 1990s. So from ancient Greece to... Um, to Egyptian art, uh, romanticism, all of that you will find in prehistoric to 1990s, um, but all designed for kids. So you can check it out. I have different levels, primary um, levels through to middle school of all my different resources. You'll find them at the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. Again, go to Ms. Artastic on TPT. And finally, if you are somebody who wants to dive deep into art and you need a bigger solution. So maybe not just a single solution where you have just a couple of resources, but maybe you need something bigger, a full program that's going to guide you through planning an entire year, provide all the resources for doing that, all the year-long plans, all the lesson plan templates, but then also teach you how to plan the year from your back to school to your first week, um, through classroom management and assessment, um, all the way through planning your entire year till the end of the year, setting yourself up with a year A and a year B so you have a rotating curriculum, so you're planning, you're spending less time planning and more time on things you love, like your passions, your family, your fur babies, whatever it might be, um, then you need to check out the Artastic Collective art curriculum. It is my art curriculum designed for art educators. So not only am I going to give you my 
three-phase proven process for planning an entire year in my Art Teacher Growth course. I'm also going to give you all the resources for the planning part, but also all the lessons as well, whether it's community builders, first week activities, when you're done, um, everything will be included. And as bonuses, you're going to get monthly Art Teacher Challenges, and you're going to get a community form that's for all the members of the Artastic Collective to talk on and collaborate together with. And then also I'll be there and you'll get a direct line to me. I will help you anytime you need my support. So this is artasticcollective.com. And here you're going to find, again, my art curriculum and other programs for our educators. You can learn about me here. But my friend, this is where you're going to transform. And you can learn more by going to uh, the art curriculum area and there I will walk you through. Enrollment opens every August and January of every year. It is the ultimate art curriculum for our educators and I want to help you through that process of planning. I'm going to make sure that I provide you with all the resources that you need to become the best educator that you can be. And if it's not August or January, then unfortunately you can't join, but you can always get on the wait list and that way you can get the art curriculum that you need to be confident and fully planned without the stress. It is designed for educators and it's gonna again help you go from stressed and overwhelmed to calm, happy, and fully planned. So make sure you go to artasticcollective.com right now. Get on the wait list if you are needing a full art curriculum to solve your planning needs. And I will see you next time.